Hello, welcome to another ISDC video. My name is Alejandro Luto and today we're going to be diving a very, very special technical wreck. A very dear to all of us, uh, one of the few natural wrecks here in Florida, the Hydro Atlantic. For this video, we are going to have uh, a different cadence. We are going to go through the dive briefing and the underwater images kind of simultaneously. So uh, we're going to present you with a video of the outside of the wreck and then where we, when we penetrate, we're going to do three separate smaller size videos. That will be for the bow, for the stern and the main attraction, the engine room. Uh, also, we have a very special guest today uh, that will be walking through the dive briefing with us. Um, after the dive videos, of course, we're going to be doing the usual history of the wreck part. So sit tight and join me for this amazing dive. Hello, my name is Didier Follin Grisel and I am an instructor trainer. Today, we're going to be diving the Hydro Atlantic. The Hydro-Atlantic wreck is a natural wreck, actually. Most of the wrecks around here are made to be wrecks. They are real ships, but they are made to be wrecks. This one is a natural wreck. Um, the dimension of the ship is 300 feet long by 52 feet wide. And it rests in 175 feet of water just outside of the Boca Inlet in Florida. In order to dive this wreck, you must be a tech diver. That's the level that you need to achieve. And uh, you can dive a light mix of nitrox. It's 170 feet, so it's not that crazy deep. Next, we're gonna be talking about diving the wreck. First, I'll talk about the outside and then the inside. So when you get to the deck, the deck's about 145 feet. And uh, outside, it's a wonderful buildup of corals and very colorful. On a nice day, you see all the colors at that depth, even though the, the wreck sits in 145 feet of water.
on the inside of the rack, there's a few points of penetration. If you're a tech diver again, you can penetrate on the bow. There's one particular space that I like to look at every time I dive it. On the second level down, there is a room called the linseed oil room that they used to use linseed oil to put on the ropes. Of course, the most interesting part of the wreck is the engine room. This engine room is, is very large and it has a number of engines, uh, all multi-cylinders, most of them driving a generator. And I assume, I'm not sure of that, but I assume that it was an electric drive for the props. Let's go to the back of the ship, uh, to the stern. When you get to the stern, the uh, penetration is, is wide open. There's a large crack on each side of the hull that probably took place when the ship landed on the bottom and it cracked the hull on both sides. So you can go in through one side and out the other side, whichever you, you pick. Uh, you can see the, the propeller shafts in there enclosure there and it's just an interesting area to visit it, it is wide open uh, you, and there's good lighting in there
Welcome back everybody. I hope you enjoyed the dive. This one is a really special one and many, many thanks to DDA for being so supportive and uh, doing that part of the video for us. I hope you enjoyed that too. Now let's talk a little bit about the history of the Hydro Atlantic. The Hydro Atlantic was launched in 1905. It was launched from the Maryland Steel Company Yard 51 in Sparrow Point. It was commissioned by the U.S. Army uh, Engineering Corps as a hopper barge and its original name was the Delaware. One of the highlights of the Delaware was the work in Philadelphia in 1922 when it removed more than 3,000 cubic yards. Take a look here at my side to understand how much is that, right? Later on in 1950, it was sold to the Construction Aggregates Corporation and it was called the Sand Captain. By 1961, it was renamed the Ezra Sansiver. At that point of time, it was rebuilt. Mostly the, the superstructure had a, a lot of changes and uh, it uh, worked mainly on the construction of the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel, where it helped to construct man-made islands for that project. Being an old ship at all, uh, by 1968, it was bought by the Hydromar Corporation of Delaware and renamed Hydro Atlantic. Eventually, as uh, time went by, a new technology arrived and there were newer, smaller dredges uh, around and the Hydro Atlantic was sent to a yard to be condemned and uh, scrapped. Final scrapping of the Hydro Atlantic was supposed to happen in Brownsville, Texas. So the dredge, the very old dredge, had to be tugged from New York all the way to Texas. And there it was on December the 7th, 1987, uh, right in front of Boca Raton, tugged by the Elizabeth II uh, when the pumps that were supposed to maintain afloat the ship started to fail. When the crew on the tug realized that that was happening, they just cut the ropes and let the Hydro Atlantic go to the bottom of the ocean where it rests nowadays. Well, we arrived to the end of another video. This one was very special. This is a very special wreck to all of our South Florida community here. I hope you enjoy it. If you did so, please leave us a thumbs up. Please remember to leave your comments. Just tell us what you thought about it. And uh, remember to subscribe in case you're not subscribed to the channel. I hope to see you soon and take care.